Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the On Wave Theater and the 33rd Annual SEMA Awards. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate excellence in ethnocultural media. But to launch our evening, prepare to be amazed. Get ready to experience the extraordinary world of Zero Gravity Circus.
Tonight's co-hosts have built their careers on understanding Canada's cultural diversity. Sudha Krishnan works with Omni News South Asian Edition as reporter and host. And joining Sudha on stage is Vincenzo Soma, anchor and associate producer of Omni News Italian Edition. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our co-hosts. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, or shall I say in Tamil, Vanakam, Vanakam. Uh, Vincenzo uh, and I are very happy to be here tonight as your co-hosts for the 33rd annual presentation of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association Excellence in Journalism Awards. Tonight I'm extremely happy to be here. Buonasera. Buonasera, benvenuti a tutti voi. Uh, è un piacere essere qui con voi uh, questa sera per questa splendida serata. Buonasera in Italian. I know that many of you study Italian, right? It's... <laughs> But I have Sue that she's going to translate everything that I say in Italian. I think my Italian's a little rusty. He thinks all of you look amazing tonight, and drinks are on him after the show. <laughs> thinks that's what he said. This evening marks Seema's first awards presentation in the N-Wave Theatre, and we are honored for this opportunity to recognize colleagues in the media for their work. Indeed, we'll look at a selection of fine work in electronic and uh, print uh, media that best reflect Canada ethno-cultural diversity. Plus, uh, we have some new award on the program uh, tonight. And of course, as you have seen, we have some amazing programs tonight. And before we move on, I'd like to remind you, uh, photography is welcome, but no flash photography, as it could be distracting for the performers. We're shy. We're shy. You're shy. Of course, he's That's shy. Right. He reads the news every night, and he's shy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But along with an amazingly energetic lineup of talent, we first want to introduce, we'll bring someone to the stage to introduce tonight's festivities. We are pleased to introduce the president of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association, Dat Nguyen. Mr. Nguyen may already be known by you for his work as a publisher and editor of the Toy Bao Vietnamese newspaper, which has been serving the Vietnamese community for uh, over a quarter of a century, and has offices in uh, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver, as well in the US. Dad is also the CEO for Web News Printing Incorporated, printing more than 50 weekly publications for ethnic and traditional newspapers and magazines. Ladies and gentlemen, Dat Nguyen. Thank you, Vizenso and Soma and Suka and Kristen. Ladies and gentlemen, honor guests, welcome to our 33rd annual awards gala 2011. We have been organizing awards galas like this every year for the past 33 years. The Canadian Ethic Media Association, CIMA, previously known as Canadian Ethnic Journalists and Writer Clubs has understood the importance of recognizing and promoting our peers since 1978. The CIMA Awards were set up to recognize talented individuals in the ethnic media. For us to grow and to serve you better, we need more participation from our members. We want to be a showcase of talent for ethnic media in Canada. Please assist us by promoting, nominating your peers, your staff, and co-workers for the next year's awards. Now it's time to celebrate. Congratulations to this year's awards winners. We want to assure you that the selection process were fair and transparent with an independent judging panel. Thanks to the judges, panel chair, Minel Matani, professor of journalism at the University of Toronto, Mr. Robert Lewis, chair of the Canadian Journalism Foundation, and Leslie De Fistar, manager of CJFE, Canadian Journalists for Free Expression. They have worked very hard and select the best in each category in their view. 
Please join me to thank the judges for their dedication and hard work. For the past few years, the ethic media has been recognized as the significant force in Canada, especially in a multicultural city like Toronto. Your contribution to ethic media has brought us to this level of success. Today, tonight we salute you and thank you for your work. We would like to continue the momentum by asking you to join CIMA and help us creating a stronger voice for the ethnic media. Be part of the team that makes us better. Why we celebrate it, we, al we also want to remind you that there are many reporters, writers, news correspondents who are less fortunate. Some of them are still in prison or under constant threat just for doing their work. Freedom of expression is taken for granted in Canada, but in many undemocratic countries, that freedom is only a dream. We need to work together to help make their dream a reality. Happy holiday season. Have a nice day and thank you. Have a nice evening, thank you. Thank you to Mr. Nguyen again. And uh, tonight we are fortunate this evening to have received greetings from uh, Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, and uh, Jason Kenney, Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. To share these with us, please welcome Mr. Mark Adler, Conservative Member of Parliament for York Centre. Mr. Mark Adler. Anyone who comes up here, watch that last step. <laughs> Suda and Vincenzo, thank you so much. And it's truly an honor and a privilege to be here this evening. You know, Dad hit it right on the nail right on the head. This truly is a celebration tonight. I mean, just look to your right, look to your left. Go ahead. I'm not just <laughs> saying that figuratively. I mean, we, we, we come from so many different countries around the world. So many ethnocultural communities are represented here this evening. But you know, when we can celebrate, we can always celebrate our differences, but the one thing that binds us all together and the one thing that makes us fiercely proud is that we're all Canadian. And what a privilege that is for all of us. So ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure this evening and great honor to bring greetings on behalf of our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Stephen Harper, and our Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and Multiculturalism, the Honourable Jason Kenney. So Dat, if you'd like to come up as the President and receive, I've got two, two letters here. So Dat, I'd like to uh, just uh, read the greetings from the Prime Minister. It is with great pleasure that I extend my warmest greetings to everyone attending the Canadian Ethnic Media Association Annual Awards Gala. I am delighted to recognize this year's honorees for their laudable contributions to the diversity and integrity of Canadian media. Canada's outstanding ethnic media journalists are a vital part of our communities. By chronicling the story of our country's growing diversity, they are strengthening Canadian pluralism. The dedicated men and women of our multicultural media outlets are representative of how our diverse communities are contributing to a stronger and more united Canada. The SEMA serves an important role in fostering this unity by encouraging a media landscape that better reflects Canada's diversity. Tonight's award recipients are exceptional examples of the invaluable service your membership is providing to diverse communities. I commend SEMA for promoting excellence in ethnic media. On behalf of the Government of Canada, please accept my best wishes for a memorable and enjoyable evening. Sincerely, the Right Honourable Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada. Well, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the award winners tonight and enjoy the evening.
Thank you to Mr. Mark Adler. And now, Suda, it's time to start with our presentation, the first award presentation, to introduce the first presenter of the, uh, this evening, who will be handling out the CIMA Award for Excellence in the Print and Media Category. Category. <laughs> Presenting this award will be Lou Segalowski, President of the Canadian Ethno Cultural Council. The Canadian Ethno Cultural Council is a non profit organization founded in 1980 and a coalition of over 30 national ethno-cultural organizations with a mandate to promote the understanding of the multicultural reality of Canada as defined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Canadian Multiculturalism Act. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lou Sekulovsky. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family. There is no place like home. As president of the Canadian Ethnocultural Council, I do emphasize the word term family. We truly are a family here tonight and throughout Canada. We come from various backgrounds, various diversities, but we have a common stitch, a common goal, and a common desire. Doing some research about our recipient uh, for the award for print, I came across a writing from August 2006. This was about three o'clock in the morning, Thursday evening, and it really inspired me. I do encourage anybody to come up with this article and read it, <coughs> excuse me, read it. It's entitled, Pride of Vietnamese. I'll quote an uh, opening paragraph. When I was just a kid, my dad bought me a book called Pride of the Vietnamese for my birthday. I tossed it away. I wanted a dog instead. Very good. Weeks later, there was nothing to watch on TV, so I finally picked up the red-covered book and opened it for the first time. I was amazed and inspired by what I read. At the end, I read that full article, and it truly is inspiring and very moving. I am not Vietnamese, I'm of Macedonian descent, and we all come from various backgrounds. Like I do emphasize, we have one common goal, and this is our family. Our family consists with Omni, SEMA, CSC, and other organizations. We're all partners, and I don't want to look at a partnership from a business perspective, but truly a family that is united. It is my pleasure and honor to present the 2011 Canadian Ethnic Media Award for print to Thien Hoyne of the Taobao newspaper for his article entitled there is no place like home. Congratulations. This year's CM Award in the print category goes to Mr. Tien Hu Win for his insightful and emotional moving series, There's No Place Like Home. Published by Tiao Bao Vietnamese newspaper where he works as a reporter, the series documented the experience of returning home when home is in Canada and another country. Since returning from a trip to Vietnam that inspired his series, Tien has become Vice President of the Vietnamese Association of Toronto. Thank you uh, so much for that. I'm so happy right now. I want to climb those curtains. Try to climb those curtains. And uh, that video is awesome because it makes it look like I'm a hard worker. Uh, <laughs> but I have something to admit. This story uh, almost didn't happen because I was scared to go back to Vietnam. Um, and the reason's really lame, too. You're going to laugh at it. I was scared to go back to Vietnam because I was worried there wasn't enough flushing toilets. Uh, I, I kept hearing stories that you have to squat to go to the washroom and such. I know it's very lame. That's why I didn't want to go back to Vietnam. But I'm glad I went back uh, because I rediscovered my family, uh, my culture, and the love of where I came from. And I, I was able to combine my love of Vietnam and appreciate that I'm here in Canada right now. Um, and of course, I just made sure I brought my own toilet paper and didn't eat any fruits either. <laughs> Uh, but uh, thank you, Lou, for that opening speech, because seriously, this is not 
just a Vietnamese story. I wrote it to encourage uh, other ethnic youths born in Canada to make an effort to visit their motherland. Canada is our home and native land. We love it. And we're here right now, but as ethnic journalists, writers and broadcasters, it's our responsibility to teach our kids to be proud of where we came from. And speaking of my fellow journalists here today, I'm very proud to be honored and honored to be in the same room with so much talent assembled tonight. Never mind winning this award, just to be here with all, all of you, it's great an honor. Thank you, Seema, for this. Um, I'd also like to thank Dak Nguyen and Nhi Do and everyone from the Toy Bao newspaper family uh, for developing me as a young writer years ago uh, and guiding me to help me get here where I stand today. But most of all, I'd like to thank my family for their support. Uh, I wouldn't have gone to Vietnam and wrote the story if it wasn't for my dad. Uh, like I said, I was very scared, but he's the one that dragged me there. He's the one that lined up in the passport office for me, and you know how, all that, how long that can take, right? So thank you for my dad for dragging me to Vietnam and making me love it. Thank you to my mom, who's my biggest fan and always uh, encouraging me to, to write. And of course, thank you to my wife, Yen, who is uh, due with our first baby boy in April. And I hope to make you both proud in the future as well. And once again, thanks to everyone. And by the way, I checked the, uh, the washrooms at these facilities. They're, <laughs> they're top notch, no squatting. Thank you again, Seema. This is awesome. Thank you so much. We started uh, uh, this evening with a wonderful performance. Okay, um, zero Anything gravity. Anything was so absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was just amazing. Now we're going to continue with another performance, which is also a great performance. You know, the wonderful world of circus. Wonderful world of circus. Il mondo magnifico del circo. Okay, do you know how to say that? Mondo magnifico el circo? You can do the Italian news anytime. <laughs> Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. The wonderful okay. world of circus provides entertainment for nearly every occasion, private events or public functions, plus they offer classes in various disciplines including trapeze, tightrope, and juggling, which I think Vincenzo knows a lot about. Uh, yes, so do you. I think we juggle every day, right? In the newsroom. I <laughs> the mean, newsroom. You know, yeah, I juggle on my set to do the, the Italian news, you on yours. So yes, it's, uh, lots it's of juggling, juggling, meeting deadlines, but I don't think we can light a candle to our wonderful, wonderful, what is it, Magnifico? Il Magnifico Mondo del Circo. Il Magnifico Mondo del Circo. Circo. Okay. Let's, let's leave it to them. <laughs> okay. okay. A nice round of applause.
program at hand. Uh, to the television category of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association Excellence in Journalism Awards. Here with us tonight uh, to present uh, the award in this uh, category, it's uh, Kuma Rezavanifar, who is the uh, first vice president of SEMA, as well as the producer of two Farsi language programs that air on Omni Television. And in addition to his work and accomplishments, over more than 20 years in television, Q is a founding member of the Iranian Canadian Cultural Fellowship and a director of the Ontario Media Development Corporation. Please put your hands together for Q Rez Vanifar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Being here tonight as a representative of Ontario Media Development Corporation, I would like to express that we are delighted to sponsor CMOS 33rd Annual Awards Gala. As an agency of Ontario Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sports, OMDC's role is to stimulate jobs and investment in six cultural media industries, book and magazine publishing, <coughs> film and television, interactive media, uh, digital media, and music. We do this through a variety of programs, funds, and tax credits, and by providing support for festivals and great events such as this. Toronto has been called the most multicultural city in the world, with over 100 languages and dialects. This diversity, which has made our city, province, and country so dynamic over the past 30 years, has thrived largely because of the work of CIMA members. Members of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association make an invaluable contribution to our province and to Canada. Their many diverse voice, voices inform Canada's ethnic communities, helping them to maintain their unique tradition and heritage. At the same time, CIMA's members deal with the important issues that affect all Canadians and help their audience to become a better citizen. I want to congratulate the CIMA's board of directors and members for another fabulous year, and we look forward to another year of great success. I wear, as you heard, two different hats today, and I would like now, on behalf of CIMA's Board of Directors and members, I would like to thank Ontario Media Development Corporation for their sincere support and sponsorship of these media awards. Thank you, congratulations to CIMA, and thank you to OMDC. <laughs> and the awards presentation. CIMA's this year's award for the documentary, television documentary category goes to Ella Kinovsky for her documentary, a great documentary titled, Who Are You? Congratulations goes to Ms. Ella Noski, producer of the documentary, Who Are You? for winning CIMA's 2011 award in television. A native of Poland, Ella started her film career in the 80s and moved to Canada in 1990. She looked to her own quest for Canadian identity as an inspiration for Who Are You? Her first production for Omni was also a deeply personal project that drew on her first-hand knowledge of Poland. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, what a thrill. Uh, I'm talking to you from Moscow, and I regret I will not be with you tonight, but uh, I am with you in spirit. I would like to thank you, the Canadian uh, Ethnic Media Association, for awarding and for you documentary, and only for providing the funds and making that happen. A production like this takes more than just one person, the producer, and I would like to thank my director, Carl Nirenberg, and the co-director and the director of photography, Malcolm Hamilton, as well as the composer of the original score, Justin Lambert. Last but not least, uh, I would like to thank a very special person who has motivated me throughout the production and inspired all the time, Jack Jedwa. Thank you very much. Lastly, this award goes to all Canadians, those whose ancestors came a long time ago and those who chose to settle down today. Thank you all for being with me tonight. Bonsoir, merci. 
Accepting the award on behalf of Ella is Mr. Jack Jebop, Executive Director of Association for the Canadian Studies. Mr. Jebop. Thank you very much uh, on behalf of Ella and Carl and uh, Malcolm. It's uh, truly a privilege and an honor for the film to win this award. Uh, it is, as Ella described and is described in the program, a deeply personal story for the four characters uh, around which the, the film is, is centered. Uh, myself, uh, my uh, colleague Victor Armini, uh, uh, Donna Dasko and Jean Thier, all of whom had common roots uh, in Poland and went along for a trip there, an adventure to re-explore, discover those roots. It's truly a, a, a Canadian story, and I want to take this opportunity to thank Madeleine Zeniak and Paratosh Mehta uh, for their involvement and their support. Uh, let me extend a second thanks to Madeleine Zeniak, actually, who's been extremely supportive, shown great confidence in all of us over many, many years, and really has been a, an inspiration. Uh, this story, like many of the other stories that have won in the past, is a Canadian story. And I think Omni should take extreme pride in telling these many, many Canadian stories that are just so important to all of us in Canada. It's important to archive this, it's important to document this, because this is really what Canada is about. It's about bringing all this together. Uh, it's about providing a legacy. And it's something that I think Ella, if I may speak on her behalf, which I'm doing in fact, uh, and myself and others involved are very proud. We're very proud of our association with Omni and very proud of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Next on uh, tonight's agenda is 2011 SEMA Award work for the internet. And presenting this award will be Dr. Ayman Al Yassini, Executive Director of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, a post he has held since being appointed in 2006. Dr. Al Yassini holds a PhD in political science from McGill University with a specialization in international relations and uh, politics of developing areas. He has participated as a keynote speaker in numerous national and international human rights conferences and is a frequent media commentator on race relation issues. And he has an extensive list of credentials that span more than 30 years, and now he can count among them SEMA 2011. Internet Award presenter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Ayman Al Yassini. Mr. President, Madeleine, thank you for inviting the Canadian Race Relations Foundation to join you on this uh, important event. And be sure tomorrow morning I'll be adding this event to my CV. Thank you. Uh, today is an important day for all of us as Canadians, for Canada, and for the international community. It is the International Declaration of Human Rights. And we do congratulate SEMA for organizing this event, for having it coincide with this important date. I am privileged to present the award for the Internet and it is quite uh, an opportune per uh, period, moment in, in our history to talk about the internet in bridging gap and linking communities together within and between countries. In Canada, the internet has become a major tool in bringing cultural communities together, in disseminating information, and also in linking cultural communities to their countries of origin. So uh, to SEMA, the excellent work which has been done and continue to be uh, done, congratulations for your events, for your recognition of accomplishments of each one of you, members of the Canadian public uh, uh, at large. Pour moi, personnellement, c'est un grand plaisir de présenter le, le, le prix pour l'Internet à Madame Sou Chan. And uh, Sue is a producer with the JaneFinch.com. We at the Canadian Relations Foundation have worked with Jane Finch. And last year, I was uh, quite privileged to join Jane Finch in receiving uh, the Paul Music Award of Citizenship. And this is one more accomplishment for Jane Finch. So the 
2011 winner, SEMA winner for the internet is Tonight, SEMA honors Ms. Sue Chung of JaneFinch.com for being a great storyteller and hands down winner of this year's Internet Award. By humanizing the Jane Finch area in a humorous way, Sue's stories work to demystify a community that is often demonized and challenged stereotypes. A passionate community activist, Sue Chung has dedicated herself to strengthening the voice of ethnic women when she's not busy sharing uplifting stories about the Canadian immigrant experience. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start off by thanking SEMA for this wonderful recognition. Um, this great country was built by hardworking immigrants who came from all over the world seeking to create a better life. Canada stands tall today because of the love, dedication, and respect that we have for one another. Um, I think that the Canadian Ethnic Media Association is a perfect example of this model. SEMA is a place where we can all work together to strengthen diverse voices in Canada. As a young child, I lost my father to a tragic accident, but the elders in my life have helped me to preserve his memory. They were a source of family history, knowledge, and experience. We honor our ethnic heritage and culture by preserving these important stories. By knowing our past, we can better shape our future. Canadian ethnic media is one of the most important activities that we can participate in. It preserves our uniqueness, it cultivates learning, and it defines our Canadian identity. As the next generation leads Canada into the future, we must continue to share the ethnic stories that contribute to our Canadian identity. Preserving cultural history is one of the utmost important things we have to do. Um, I remain committed to documenting tales from Canadian newcomers, as well as to help providing a strong voice to young women of color. Um, I hope that my generation will continue the excellent tradition that ethnic broadcasters, newspapers, and radio have brought to bear. I look forward to sharing together with you and hearing your stories. We are a united people, and Canadian ethnic media is a catalyst for greater things to come. Thank you for this recognition, and thank you for your contributions towards building a stronger Canada. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Do you know, I'm taking the, you know, the hat before. Yes. And my head's still spinning a little bit. It's still you know, spinning. From uh, the World of Circus. I mean, it yeah, was, was really, really wonderful. Calls, yeah. That, yeah, busy making phone calls. <laughs> and I think that, you know, a, a way to the, basically to, to say the, that act, it's just one word. What word is that? Incredibile. Incredibile. Which basically it's a word that we lend to the English language, Italian word that we lend to the. Oh, you let it on low. Yeah, okay. it's on low. Okay, <laughs> because it's a Latin word, it's a Latin right? Word. Incredibile. Do you know how to say incredible in Tamil? No. Pramadam. Doesn't that sound incredible? Say it again. Pramadam. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I don't think we've actually loaned that word to anybody. Uh, no. No, no. no. Well, why don't, let, why we don't, don't we let, let them do... Why don't we let know, them yes. just do their show? Because we promise, we, we guarantee you it's going to be incredible. That's right. The wonderful word of circus, okay. il mondo magnifico del circo. Okay.
think we better introduce the presenters of our next award, ladies and gentlemen, to present the very first Rainbow Caterpillar Children's Literature in Mother Language Award. Please welcome the founders of Rainbow Caterpillar, Hanush Abbasi and Happy Testa. Thank you very much for that introduction. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Happy Testa, and I am one half of Rainbow Caterpillar. Um, Rainbow Caterpillar is a multilingual children's bookshop. Uh, we started it with the notion of helping parents pass on their mother languages to their children, which is very difficult to do if you don't have the tools. Just speaking, sometimes kids rebel. So we decided we would start bringing books and toys and other things in the mother language. Last January, we came up with uh, uh, the crazy idea of doing an award, uh, an award to encourage writers to produce work and produce children's stories in their mother languages. And I guess that idea wasn't all that crazy after all, because here we are today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Hanusha Bassi, and I'm the other half of Rainbow Caterpillar. Uh, we are very happy to say that we have received 38 stories in eight languages from across Canada. And um, we received lovely stories from children, and one of them, Jalila, is here with us tonight. Um, this evening, we are happy to present the first ever Rainbow Caterpillar Literature, Children's Literature in Mother Language Award to Ahmad Marouf for Sea of Pearls. Here's a little video about Ahmad. Meet Ahmad Marouf, winner of Rainbow Caterpillar's Children Literature and Mother Language Award for his short story, Sea of Pearls. Before emigrating to Canada in 2005, Ahmad worked with National Syrian TV and wrote many short movie scripts for children, including Syrian TV's first cartoon series. He published a collection of short stories in Arabic and a collection of poetry in English. Ahmad just finished writing The Noise of Living with Others, a feature-length screenplay. Good evening. I am honored to be with you tonight and impressed that the story I've written 10 years ago in Damascus, inspired by the Arabic culture, will get the chance to be read in Toronto in three languages, Arabic, French, and English. This award creates a new opportunity for the Canadian multicultural literature, which unfortunately is not the mainstream culture. Through my work for Radio Canada International for many years, I keep raising this question. Why the facts of demographic diversity in the Canadian society are not reflected as they should in media, culture, and artistic scene? I know there are many different answers, and I'm sure that all of us are working hard to find the ways to change this reality. I would like to thank Rainbow Caterpillar Bookshop and SEMA for giving a voice for many writers who come to Canada with big dreams without getting the chance to achieve even part of them. I'm also encouraged by this award that I am going ahead in writing a script based on the story which may become a Canadian cartoon movie with a different taste. Thank you very much. It was a tough competition. It wasn't easy because we received many good stories. And uh, Ahmad was chosen as the best. But we would also like to acknowledge some honorable mentions because there was a lot of effort in so many languages that came out. So in alphabetical order by language, we, ha we would like to acknowledge as best honorable mentions um, Farzane Moaven for her story, Who Do You Love the Most, in Farsi. Letizia Tesi for her story Gino Salamino in Italian. Sonia Sa for her story The Happy King in Portuguese. Liet Lee Lopez for The First Snowman in Spanish. And I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Gerald Luzangi, Dorothy Luzangi, and Ver Verdiana Mate Luzangi for the story Hunter with the Snake in Swahili. 
We want to thank all the writers who wrote to us um, and sent in their stories. Uh, keep it up, guys, because you're doing a fabulous job. Uh, we also want to thank all the judges who volunteered their time uh, for, to the task of reading all those lovely stories. Uh, we, without them, we wouldn't be able to uh, do this. So thank you all so very much. Some of the judges are here tonight. And another partner that we've had in all of this has been Sima and Madeline Zinyak. And we want to say a really heartfelt thanks for having helped to bring this first award to such a splendid debut. Thank you so much, and hopefully we're going to have many more occasions like this. Thanks to all Thank the board. You. And uh, now we're going to go to uh, the next uh, performance of the evening. It will be uh, by a dance company uh, called Hips Don't Lie. Well, the Hips Don't Lie Dance Company is an international dance company dedicated to helping its customers create the most entertaining, vibrant, and lively gatherings. They perform a variety of styles, including belly dancing, jazz, ballroom, and a range of ethnic folk dances. Let's see what they've chosen for us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Hips Don't Lie. for the first time tonight, and that is the SEMA Award for Innovation. And uh, presenting uh, the new SEMA Award for Innovation will be Dr. Uh, Minel uh, Matani, Associate Professor of Geography and Journalism at the University of uh, Toronto. 
And in addition to her work with the University of Toronto, Dr. Matani is president of the Association of Canadian Studies and director of the Centre for Innovation in Diversity and Journalism. She's a, a much uh, uh, sought after as a speaker and as a consultant of the topic of representation of ethnic diversity in the media and an established author of numerous articles and publications in her areas of interest, uh, mixed race identity, media and minority representation, critical journalism, and women of color in geography. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next presenter, Dr. Minel Matani. Thank you so much for that very kind introduction, and good evening, everybody. It is such a pleasure to be here tonight. It's a true honor for me to be the chair of the award jury. There were so many excellent submissions this year. The jury spent many hours deliberating. This was not an easy task. Many stories were inspirational, and what really struck us was the passion and the emotion that we saw in so many of the submissions. We could really tell that they were, these were labors of love. Thank you, Seema, for this excellent opportunity to witness so many examples of accurate depictions of Canada's rich demographic reality. It is my privilege now to be presenting the Innovation Award. This is a new category this year, which showcases an organization that demonstrates innovation and excellence in Canadian ethnic journalism. It's truly a unique award for outstanding contribution to diverse, fair, and equitable coverage and representation of Canada's citizenry. One organization really stood out among the rest for us because of their commitment to reflect Canadian diversity. And our inaugural winner of the Innovation Award is Diversity Reporter, and Mossein Abbas in particular. Let's take a look at our recipient. For the innovative nature of its stories and for standing out above the rest because of the consistently high quality of their work, the Diversity Reporter, a multilingual publication that calls itself Canada's multicultural voice, has been named inaugural winner of SEMA's Innovation Award. Under the leadership of founder and editor Mohsin Abbas, the Diversity Reporter's number one objective is to make readers feel welcome in their language of choice. They publish 11. Congratulations. Thank you, Canada, for letting me drop something in my Blackberry when I was late. Thank you, everybody. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Diversity Reporter team, I'd like to thank Seema for this uh, honor. Also, I'd like to mention kind support uh, for Jim Poling from Hamilton Spectator. Roger Gillespie from Toronto Star and Mr. Mirza Wahid from BBC World Services, who gave me a chance to do my profession in Canada when I was unable to speak English properly many years ago. Uh, also, it was a long shot in a time when print news is losing ground even more. So when you consider that the team was made up, uh, people with little to no professional experience, getting even this far was fight every step of the way we had to deal with advertisers who wouldn't pay, a competition from established newspapers who didn't seem room in the market for anyone else. We also had to gain the trust of community that is not often well served by ethnic, uh, sorry, traditional media. It paid off, though, because mainstream papers in the region are carrying more immigrant stories. We won, and so did everyone else. Everyone else. Thank you, and I'd like to dedicate this award to 22 my fellow journalists who died doing their profession in Pakistan. And I'm flying tomorrow to do a film uh, on, the, on the lives of their families. And I'll have something to tell them uh, Tuesday morning that we never forgot them. And what we believed in, we're achieving and we're working and we'll never forget them. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And very well said. Can we give another uh, round of applause to all our performers and our award winners so far? Very inspiring. 
And actually, we have more performance now. Yeah. Yes, you another performance. Grace yourself, mm -hmm. another performance by Hips Don't Lie Dance Company. By the way, Vincenzo, they are holding auditions. Uh, yeah, I'm going to apply. I can lie anywhere. <laughs> As he <laughs> okay. said, lie on the beach. La vie, that, that, that's it. That's it. Exactly. But I don't think I don't think I can do what they do, which is very very gracious, and they, they dance cool. beautiful. So uh, uh, another round of applause for them. Let's welcome back again on stage. Oops, don't lie, everyone. The winner of 2011 SEMA Award and the winner of the that, that we put back the um, Rainbow Caterpillar Children later on in Matter Language Award have all been honored. Okay, we are saved a very special presentation for last. Every year, the Sirhe Kumara Ziniak Award is presented to one outstanding individual who, through journalism, has spoken for Canadian multiculturalism. And now, a short video about the man whose legacy we honor. Journalist, author, poet, editor, and publisher, Sergei Khamara Ziniak was a passionate advocate of multiculturalism. In 1949, after the Second World War, Ziniak came to Canada and continued his journalistic profession. He began publishing the country's first newspaper in the Belarusian language, the Belarusian Voice. And in 1952, he started the Mutual Cooperation League, 
representing 20 ethnic organizations from Central and Eastern Europe. It continued until 1962. Ziniak began the Canadian Ethnic Journalists and Writers Club in 1978 after the realization of the need to have an organization that was inclusive, not only of publishers, but broadcasters, writers, and reporters. He was the inaugural executive director with membership of over 200 publishers, writers, and editors from ethnic print, radio, and television. Ziniak believed ethnic journalists should promote the values of Canadian citizenship and report on Canadian affairs as well as on those in their homelands. Serhei Hamada Ziniak's initiative would prove to be a true ethnic and multicultural form. In 2006, the name changed to the Canadian Ethnic Media Association to be inclusive of the new emerging media. After years of successfully reflecting and championing the role of ethnic media, the ideals of Serhei Hamara Ziniak continue to guide the work of this organization into the future. To present the award named after her father, we are pleased to introduce Madeleine Ziniak, chair of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association and national vice president of Omni Television. Madeline has received numerous community, government, and industry-related honors for her dedication throughout her career, including the Order of Canada, our country's highest civilian honor for lifetime achievement. As a member of the Order of Canada designation, which recognizes a lifetime of distinguished service, Madeline was cited for her contribution as the major, major driving force behind the de development and the growth of multilingual and multicultural television in Canada. And somehow she still finds time to be, let's say it, the best boss on the planet. She is. <laughs> Madeline Zinia. What a nice compliment. Thank you. And we have witnesses here who heard it. Over 180 of them. Welcome, everybody, to this evening. What a great night. Isn't this great? I should say that our winners have come across Canada from Victoria, Edmonton, Ottawa, Toronto, and it really shows the, di the dynamics and the strength of uh, ethnic media and where it's going to improve and develop Canada as a fantastic nation. It is my honor to present once again the 2011 Sergei Khmara Ziniak Award to an, an outstanding individual for lifetime achievement in the area of media and multiculturalism. It is always such a privilege to acknowledge the important and effective work of the award recipients in the true reflection of Canada through media. I am humbled and reminded of my father's passion for freedom of expression, his commitment to language rights in the reaffirmation of one's culture, and his vision of Canada as a place where diversity should be respected and not least Multilingual media have a pivotal role to play in the reflection, editorial perspective, and essential self-esteem of all Canadians. The values and the principles that my father lived by are very much reflected in this year's award recipient, Roman Bretan, who traveled from Edmonton to join us tonight. He is a stalwart champion of multicultural and an inclusive Canada. As program director at CKER World FM, he practices this every day. But that's the day job. He is also a lecturer at the University of Alberta for Ukrainian language undergraduate courses and has developed the classroom delivery component of the Folklore Studies Program for the Department of Modern Languages and Literature. Roman is also a producer of audiovisual material for use in bilingual schools in both Alberta and Ontario through the Access Network, adapting dramatization of social study materials and classics in literature for classrooms. He is a longtime researcher for Historic Sites Alberta, collecting and interpreting structural and narrative histories for homesteads in East Central Alberta at the turn of the 20th century. But Roman is not all work, but also play. He is co-author of numerous songs in Ukrainian and English, 15 of which have been recorded right across North America. So Roman, maybe you'll sing for us tonight. So let's meet Roman Bertan. Every year, SEMA presents the Serhei Khabara Ziniak Award to one outstanding individual who through journalism has spoken for Canadian multiculturalism. 
Roman Bertan joined World FM in 1982 as a volunteer co-host of its daily Ukrainian program and soon was asked to take over as host. He became program director in 2007 when Rogers purchased World FM and in this role works closely with each of the more than 50 language cultural groups that air programming on the station. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2011 Sergei Khmara Ziniak Award recipient, Roman Bertan. Well, I must say there's a reason why I work in radio. And the reason is that probably the most difficult thing I've done this month was learning how to turn and look smilingly into the camera at the end of that bit. Um, this is indeed very humbling. Uh, it's uh, an honor and it's a, a surprise, certainly something that I was not expecting. But in a business that I'm sure many people in this hall will uh, appreciate uh, is um, often underappreciated. Uh, it's occasionally nice to get a, a pat on the shoulder as opposed to a kick on the, in the behind, which many of us in our communities tend to get, mainly because we, we stand out by our, I think, uh, sometimes intrusiveness, sometimes our obstinance, but basically because we're driven to do something, to get the word out, to bridge between Canadian culture and our own cultures. World FM, uh, CKER Radio, was the vision of someone called Roger Charest Sr. and along with the general manager, Diana Parker, who for decades drove that station, uh, they had an unswerving belief in the importance of ethnic media. And that's something that I inherited from them. And then when CKER World FM was purchased by Omni, it was just, or sorry, by World FM, it was just, uh, let's try that again. When World FM was purchased by Rogers Media, it was just the next natural step in my evolution and the evolution of the station. Because then we got to partner with Omni Radio and such outstanding individuals as Stan Papalkas and of course, uh, Madeline, uh, who's become a real close friend. And uh, you know, it's like finding, being part of an endangered species and suddenly seeing your own somewhere off in the distance. And uh, I, I thought I was the only one kind of thing, but here are people who understand the language we speak when we talk about multicultural broadcasting. So uh, inclusive is a word that really stood out to me when I learned more about SEMA. And I think that's something that's so very important because we're not inclusive inwardly only, we're inclusive outwardly as well. We're not asking to just be included in Canadian culture. We're asking Canadian culture to take a look at us and be a part of who we are as the ethno-cultural makeup of this country. And uh, as a result, issues are important. Uh, be, good citizenship is something we've driven hard at our radio station. Uh, thing, issues such as domestic or spousal abuse or postpartum depression, for instance, not spoken in cultures, we have taken right into each and every one of the 19 different languages that we produce at, radio, at World FM and made those key issues so that those do come out. So it's all about learning how to speak to the people and teaching them how to speak out and how to be proud Canadian citizens. Um, this to me is a very personal honor as well because as a little kid I used to sit at a play, well at a record player and play DJ and radio was always a big uh, passion for me and it was natural in my household where we spoke Ukrainian to, to do that in English or in Ukrainian. So uh, to now be able to be paid for it and still feel like I'm making a huge difference in doing something that I love so passionately and now to be recognized for it is definitely a dream come true. So a huge thank you to my father to my mother, who to this day still loses sleep, even though it's almost 30 years I'm doing this, that I don't have a real job. <laughs> You've got to have something to fall back on, she reminds me. This really is a calling, and I'm sure everyone here understands that. So um, I thank SEMA, I thank you all, and um, lifetime achievement sometimes is understood as just about put out to pasture. So we'll, let me just say that uh, I have a six month old son waiting back at the hotel, so it's too soon to be put out to pasture yet. I'm looking forward to many more years working uh, in Rogers Media and uh, I look, look forward to a much closer relationship with SEMA as well. And a special thank you to my children, especially my wife Susanna, who's been with me every step of the way and is here tonight. Thank you. Diakou Slava Ukraini. presentation of the Sergei Kamara Ziniak Award, we come to the conclusion of our evening. Vincenzo? Yes, it's been uh, a great pleasure being here uh, tonight. Grazie, grazie di cuore a tutti per essere stati qui con noi questa sera. Una serata veramente uh, particolare. It's a beautiful uh, gala night for, uh, for every, uh, everybody. Uh, for me, it's been a great pleasure because I feel like at home. I just I can say that you know, over, over here that basically, you know, I can speak my 
English with my Italian accent <laughs> because I'm among so many friends that they do have also an accent and I'm allowed to make mistakes. Oh. <laughs> so it's beautiful. <laughs> It's been a wonderful, wonderful evening, and it's been a pleasure co-hosting this event uh, with you. And to help us say good evening, or in Tamil, namaste, uh, we have our closing performance, which will be our opening act, Zero Gravity Circus. Di nuovo, buonasera e uh, appuntamento al prossimo anno. <laughs> good evening, everyone, and we will see you next year. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you.